I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and thanks for spending a little time with us. I'm happy tonight, today to introduce uh, Patty Packard. Appreciate you coming, sharing your story. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. You were born in the church, weren't you? I was. Oh, boy. Born so and raised. You've got a great story, and so <laughs> I'm interested to have you share that with our listeners. And so tell us a little bit, where, where were you born? I was born in Meridian, Idaho. Okay. Um, I call it the next Utah, I guess, the <laughs> next over. Uh, very busy with lots of members of the church. I feel like we had a great support group, and yeah. I was... Uh, Raised by good LDS parents. I think when I was younger, they must have been inactive a little bit. Because um, I remember at probably about four years old going to the temple with a few of my little brothers and sisters in uh, oh, Idaho you're, Falls you're and being sealed, sealed to oh, them. Okay. So uh, it was always a very special place in my heart. I <laughs> lived and breathed and grew up doing it. Yeah, baptized at age mm -hmm. eight, I guess. And yeah primary and yeah. then young women's at 12. Everything. Did you Everything. take seminary? And Did seminary. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just like a model <laughs> model student, I guess. Model Mormon. <laughs> model Mormon. Were you, did you ever bear your testimony as All a the young time. person? Did you? All the time. Yeah. Just That's, knew the church was true. I just There's, knew it was true. There's no question about it. I just knew. You ever, oh. Uh, We'll get to that in a minute, I guess. It's just, a, it's just amazing what, what has God has done in our lives. It, it is very amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you never thought this, of mm -mm. course, years ago. Never. So what happens at, uh, after high school? And get married right out of high school. I mean, I'm engaged have? my senior year to a return missionary. Wow. Um, in fact, his dad had was... Had you known him your whole oh, life? Oh, not really him, but his family. We'd been in the ward a lot. His dad was my seminary teacher. I loved him. I loved learning a lot of the seminary classes, partied a lot, and did oh, a lot yeah. of scripture chasing and that type of thing. Yeah. And I remember being in one of the party classes that was too big, so they pushed us into his class, this uh, Brother Packard's class, and uh, who ended up being my father-in-law, by the way. Oh, boy. And so he taught the gospel, yeah. the Mormon gospel. And I loved it because I've always had a heart. I think God's just always given me a heart for truth. Yeah. Because even as a teenager, I, I wanted to know the truth. I didn't want to just play and party. I wanted to know the truth. Really? Mm-hmm. So, and that's so different than so many kids. Did you see a difference between you and the other kids? Well, really? not really, but, no. but yet when it came to that, I just, I guess I had that hunger yeah. that I didn't even really recognize at the time of what, what it would lead to in my life today. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I got married, so I married my seminary teacher's son. son. And he was, you say he was a return missionary, so a little bit older. Mm -hmm. Four years older. Four years older, and you got married in the temple? In the temple. and Idaho Falls again? Uh, Manti. Oh, Manti. Okay. Manti. Yeah. And I, was, you know, I remember going through and actually being nervous because I thought, I will never remember all these things I'm supposed to remember. So it wasn't a real peaceful, pleasant experience yeah, you're that concentrating first time, because so you much. don't know really what you're expecting, but right. it was, uh, I mean, we had a good life. We ended up having eight children, five boys, wow. three girls. 
Um, Did you go back to the temple? Mm -hmm. from yeah, regular? but it was always a little nervous for me. Yeah. I couldn't, re like I said, couldn't remember everything. I even had one person, one little lady working in there once that said, you need to come more often so that you can remember these things. And I thought, I'll never be able to do it, <laughs> you know. So, but it, all in all, I don't, I don't really have any complaints about the about, about the, the temple. Ch uh, temple or the church or yeah. you know it was a I guess well because it was it was what I was grown up doing and yeah. it was uh, that culture you get so used to and it's familiar I was yeah I was and, and eight happy. children eight children wow all raised in the church uh -huh. I guess and husband was you were, had callings I guess had callings I worked in the primary a lot with music um was in Young Women's for a while, um, mostly supported my husband. He was a bishop a couple of times. Oh, was he? He was always in really... And was this still in Idaho? I uh, know this was in Washington. As soon as we married, we moved to Spokane, Washington. Oh, okay. So we were out of state. We were there for about 18 years. Okay. And uh, he was a bishop there once. Um, and then here, just recently, um, over here. a singles word here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we've, like I said, been very involved. Um, just, just active and busy. Yeah, and busy, busy, busy. Well, then I guess the big question is, is what happened to you? <laughs> well, let me just tell you, I, I had some, I had lots of children who just um, were kind of frustrated and angry when they got to, be, to the age where they could leave home. And so, because of because of they didn't like how we raised them so strictly. So strict. Yeah. They felt like couldn't we couldn't play on Sunday, kind of stuff. Just you know, all kinds of stuff yeah. like that. I mean, just the the legalisms and the and the just the oh way. anyway yeah just you know how some families feel or some kids feel like it's just too hard. There's too much, and I'm forced, and not, nobody understands me. So, a lot of my older boys had not my oldest one but some of the other ones had left home mm. moved out of state and just had left the church and said we just don't want anything to do with it we're happier than we've ever been now were you judging them kind I of? think sometimes as a mom yeah we you mom know a lot dad. of our success we we didn't feel successful I remember teaching Relief Society one Sunday and I just said do any of you ever feel like you just never really can quite be successful in the church and I mean, a lot of that was based on I was having struggles with my kids. Yeah. I they wouldn't. Well, you're disappointed in yourself that you didn't do. Didn't more think, think I was a good did, mom. Yeah. Didn't think I was a good mom. So a lot of people, you know, kept saying, "Yes, you are. Yes, you are." Well, what was their response when you said that? Does anybody? Well, were there others in there that? There's a lot of people who never felt good enough. Well, and obviously. you don't want to ever admit that your children are oh. failing or you don't. Or that and you're, having problems no. and we just don't want to admit that kind no of stuff. but i think god started this work of bringing me out and opening my eyes by i remember i hit a point in my life where i started defending my kids you know what that's between they need to figure Family. this out it's between them and god where i never was able to say that before oh, wow. so as i a few more started leaving i recognized something inside of me was just like god they're not mine they're yours I mean, I, you're the only one that can figure them out. You created them. I mean, who am I to think I can even figure this out? So there was this process that started happening, and yet I would still, you know, I was human. I was still... Pray, uh, you were praying for them to come back yeah, to Yeah, always church. praying for them to come back, sure. but recognizing this is between, this journey is between you and God now. Yeah. And so then um, we ended up moving to Colorado from here to work for some of these boys, building homes. Oh, Holy smokes, that put us in a whole new ball game. And my 18, 17, 18 year old daughter ended up meeting a Christian boy and starting to date him. Is this your youngest? No, no, she's she kind of middle, six, the number six okay. of eight. Yeah. And I remember her being concerned that I would be disappointed. And I said, hey, he seems like a really nice boy. Yeah, yeah I'd hoped she got, would be married in the temple, but hey, I love Gary. He's, he's a good, good boy. Yeah. Well. Then I remember one time our bishop called us in, my husband and I, and just let us know that she was going to be excommunicated, but he couldn't tell us why. And we were just dumbfounded. I'm like, you don't excommunicate a teenager. I mean, they don't know anything about anything yet, you know. Well, he wouldn't tell us, and I, for some reason, we didn't ask her. We just thought, you know, 
that's for her. Well, it wasn't until I was on my journey coming out that she told me, oh, it's because I got baptized a Christian. I'm like, you were baptized a Christian? She's like, yeah. Oh well, I remember goodness. when they were dating, they would come to our sacrament meeting and then they'd leave and go to his church. And they did that for a couple of months and then suddenly the, he wasn't coming anymore. And I said, what's going on? And she said, well, his mom won't let him come to the Mormon church anymore. And I said, that is so not fair. Yeah. I yeah. said, I'm letting you go there. Yeah. You know, and I just says, oh, that just, I said, she really ticks me off, that mama. His, you know, but we love each other now. We're great. But, you know, what a journey of just le learning to give and take and appreciate people for who they were because he was a very, very mm -hmm. decent, kind yeah. young man. So that was well, kind of the... It's hard to believe that there are such people outside <laughs> of the church, it's isn't so there? It's so true. Yeah. We you were think, kind of taught to be afraid. No, yeah, nobody is, is, has the values that we do, yeah. you know, as Mormons. Yeah. Well, did she ever share anything with you? Or when she went to the church, the Christian church, did she ever say, you know what, Mom? There's, or did she? I don't know. She didn't really. She was pretty quiet, but I do remember she was constantly calling, saying, I need you to pray for this person. I just watched the news, and this happened, and we need to pray for them. And I was like, and that was different, who huh? does that? <laughs> I mean, I never experienced anything like that. So I just, I noticed things about them, but they never really said a whole lot. Um, in fact, she says, I remember people would ask me about growing up Mormon, and she goes, I, I don't know anything about it. And they'd say, what? And she goes, no, I just, I never got it. I just, I never, I, I don't and know yet anything. she went to primary and young yeah. women and so seminary. I, then I could see through this journey how God, you know, all my kids that I thought were rebels, it literally, I, now I know that God created them that way because they could not live the lie that I was living. And I, and I don't say that unkindly or meanly. Yeah, I know what you meanly, mean. Meanly. But my kids could not live the lie, and so they, and they left. They understood it and got it. They, but they didn't understand. My my one daughter was Christian, but the others just left the church. They didn't want anything. Oh. Some of them almost became to the point of atheistic. But um, so what happened is a few years ago, I got we got a phone call that said my second son, who was just the most angry of all of them, was in over you over what. Uh, most angry of the church. Oh, against of, the church? Against the, of the how church. he was raised in the okay. church and everything. He had an accusation against him and was uh, going to be put into, he was put into jail. Huge accusations that mm. were that were very serious. But he was in there for three months. I'm trying to figure out how to make this really short and sweet. But he, in that, within 24 hours, once he got out, within 24 hours, he said, I felt somebody put their arm around me, and there was nobody there. And he says, it was like this voice said, my son, I love you, and you've been going this direction. Let's go this other way now. And he says, Mom, for the first time in my life, I felt the most unconditional love I'd ever felt. <laughs> and so when he walked out of the jail, when we got him bonded out, I'm like going, this can't be my son. I mean, he had physically, his physical appearance changed. had changed, and he was so full of this love that, and he was the most angry, mean, oh, just, before that. yeah, very giving, very, uh, but he was in this, he was in this war, in this turmoil, so I watched him, and then through the course of the next year and a half before trial and stuff, three of my other children gave their life to God because of what they saw in their brother. Oh, my goodness. And I'm just like, well, well what's... did he start going to Christian church oh, yeah. and oh, Bible yeah. and everything? Oh, carried his Bible over. I've never seen a Bible so marked up in my life. In the jail, he prayed to God, and he says, this is amazing what because... What a blessing. Absolutely. Wow. That's why God says, visit those in prison. So in jail, he says, um, I prayed because I knew my family would be happy that I could go back to the Mormon church. He says, so first this thought. is amazing. And, and he says, Mom, it was that voice again that's like, you will not be going back to the Mormon church. <laughs> so see, it's all these conversations that just, I, God just had me thinking, 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 and, and, I, and pondering. And that maybe there's more out maybe there have than I, just I, this narrow. Did I know? So the, the time that I made the decision to start asking questions, I mean, God had to put a craving in me because I kept saying, don't try to teach me. I have the truth. But then one day God broke every, all the barriers down, and I just started begging them to answer me this, show me where in the Bible this, show me. And they started telling me LDS history. These are your kids me Bible. My kids, yeah. my kids. 
And so I remember. But you were willing to listen. Well, I got it was God that did it yeah. because He's the only one that can move that. So I got to the point where I had to, and I've never done this in my life, but it became so critically serious to me. I said, I am 54 years old, and I have some health problems. I don't know how much longer I'll be here. I I want to know the truth so desperately right now, but I'm so scared yeah. because I. We've been told that if we leave, oh. we'll be damned to eternal hell if mm -hmm. we leave the church. So there was this fear, and at that moment I just said, I just looked to heaven and I said, I want to get out of the box and become like a brand new baby, and you lead me, if you're my creator, I should have to have no fear because you know my heart better than anybody else right at this very moment. So I'm going to get out and you lead me. And if it's back to Mormonism, I'll go. But if it's somewhere else, I'll go. And from that moment on, my son gave me a Bible. <laughs> I read and walked the streets and read and walked the streets. I didn't want to take my kids' word for it anymore. I didn't want to take my husband's, the church's, nobody's. I said, this is between you and me. Little did I know, going into Christianity, that that's really what that it was. What it is. I didn't yeah. understand that no, yet. No, we don't understand So that. he showed me. Through, the, through his word, and I had notebooks full of underlined passages and topics. He showed me grace. He I, showed me who he you was. you understood that before? Never. Never. Why, After why all, do we do. miss that? Never. He showed me, it's not rules and regulations, he showed me who he was. He, I mean, he laid it out in such a fashion that... You couldn't deny it? No. And my kids through this last few years have said, you are like the mom we never had. And I go, what are you talking about? I was a good mom. And they go, mom, you were, but mom, you were never happy. Oh. You were always depressed. You constantly said you weren't a good mom, which told us we probably weren't good kids. Mm -hmm. And they go, mom, when we ask you questions about the gospel, Mormon gospel, you could never answer. She said, I don't know, go ask your dad. And they go, mom, you have completely changed. Oh my and goodness. I go, really? And they go, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, praise God. Uh, so, you have a trust in God and you understand what he did mm -hmm. for us. And, and that takes the judgment out, out of our lives, the pride, um, yeah. all of those things. Yeah. Well, speaking of hubby, what happened? I mean, did you share with well, him? Well, I and think probably my, you asked the question about what was the greatest loss. And I think it was losing the trust of my husband. I mean, he... You know that he didn't see these changes in the kids and and you. Not the same, not the same way. Isn't and I it funny how people react differently to this message. Well, and I think I came out too, and I think it happened so fast and so quickly. I don't, I don't even, I don't blame them in one sense. So I had to be really patient for a while because I knew it happened so fast and sudden. I didn't even really tell him. I was, I just left. Yeah. But I think God had it that way because I, I'm, I was such a believer of thinking that my husband or the church, were, they were so much smarter than me, that I, I think God had me do oh. it that way because God put His truth in me so profoundly, so deeply rooted, that some people are like, like my kids are like, what, He did something for you He didn't even do for us. And I go, you guys, I had to go back into an LDS home. You didn't. Yeah, and funny. I said, if, if He would have done it any other way, I sometimes wonder if... The hu my husband, the church, because the stake president wanted to talk to me all the time. I wondered if they could have talked to me back in yeah. to th rethinking things, but God did His work. And once your eyes are open, it's just... But you're right. I think there's sometimes a patience that's required because you can see where God has maybe been leading you along and helping mm -hmm. you along. Where when we share this with our friends or family, it's kind of hitting them all at once. It is. And, and it's shocking. And it hurt them so bad. So I knew that was going to take time. They even moved my youngest daughter out of state to get her away from me. I know they weren't doing it to be mean, but they oh, were so scared. Of, because that she was still in the church. They were so scared that she was going to follow me and listen to me. Oh. And so it was, but I just prayed before she left. She didn't know it. I prayed and said, she's yours, Lord. Yeah. She moved out of state and... God showed her through fruits. Serious? She watched her Christian family. She watched her LDS family. 
And she, she said about a year later, she called, she says, I'm visiting Christian churches. I go, what, what, what? And she says, Mom, it, like God just, I had to, I think he had to move me away to show me. It was like I was watching this, this movie. That's and she goes, it's my things. Christian family, has this peace in their life that I have never known, never experienced. And she says, I was so mad at you, I wanted to hurt you. And I go, I know you did. And I don't blame you because I did hurt you by yeah. leaving. But I had to follow God. Sure. And so if, you know, I knew that you guys were hurting, I knew you were. Yeah. And so I had to wait it out and trust God. But my, my husband, it, yeah, I just pray that God will open his eyes someday because Man. all the LDS people, as much as I love, this is never about people, it's about doctrine. And as much as I love them, I just pray that they'll be set free because there's so much pain and bondage. Yeah. Um, but we we uh, divorced about, well, last fall. Oh, I'm sorry. And it was a hard one, but I, we, I, we tried to do it out of love and respect because we, it just, this this sort of truth was just doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, just this separation. And we, I don't think either one of us wanted it. Didn't really know what to do with it. But one day I just said, either we go actively do something about this or we love each other enough to say, you go be who you need to be, and I'll go be who I need to be, and let God do what he's going to do. Oh, my. So it's been a, it's been a, very, very difficult. Yeah. Very difficult. Um, something, I, like you said, that I never, ever anticipated in my life or ever thought, but it's been the greatest blessing in my life to know the the Jesus of the Bible, yeah. that he's my, like Mary says, my Savior, my God. <laughs> and I was just like, that so new song on Christian radio, I'm overwhelmed, <laughs> I'm overwhelmed by you. Yeah, I'm overwhelmed. Well, we just, we just don't understand that Jesus in Mormonism. Mm -mm. And uh, as we've said here, there's so many people that have say now coming through this process that there, it is a different Jesus. Yeah. And now you understand grace yeah. and works. and yeah. It was interesting. Um, I remember when I was kind of at the beginning of my journey, uh, I was with my kids in Colorado kind of researching. And the, the first night I was, they were taking me to a Bible study. And I was still so nervous. It was right in the beginning. And I knelt going down. Going into a Christian church. Yeah, going to a Christian church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I, uh, I went to... Yes. I went to uh, kneel up to my room where I was staying. I knelt down to pray and I said, Lord, I'm so nervous. I'm so, would you please the Bible just, study. yeah, would you please just help me and give me your peace? So I opened up the Bible and it turned to Revelations 2, a uh, few verses down about, I, I've seen your patience that you have dealt with those who say they're apostles and they're not. And I was like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> then we went to Bible study. We're 10 minutes late. As we walked in, the pastor had us turn to Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing. And I just like literally wept. <laughs> and it was like God was just showing me all along. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're on the right track. I'm right there with you. And my son-in-law came in and knelt down with me, put his arms around me and prayed with me. And so God has just held me and kept me on this journey. And I I just thank him for that, and oh. all the glory goes to him because I was never wise enough to figure it out myself. It was it was all him. And it's and, uh, like my wife and I. Every once in a while, we'll look at each other and just say, "Can you believe this has happened?" Because it's so it's so wonderful, and to understand who Jesus is as yeah. God. And there's days you just do you do it. You just go. You're just praising all day and thanking him for. Yeah. For why yeah. did you do this for me? Yeah. Why did you do this for me? I'm just, yeah. I'm just, you know. The Bible means a little different to mm -hmm. you now. Love the Bible. Yeah. It's it's my. I crave. I didn't ever understand hungry and thirsting after. That's to that scripture about hunger and thirsting, mm -hmm. and that's what we feel about the Bible, yeah. isn't it? So it's that's such it's a good uh, feeling. absolutely amazing. And kind of getting back to the judging and, you know, you have so many children and I'm sure they all had so many experiences, but to, to not have to feel like you're judging them or concerned about 
I mean, it is between them and God. It's between them and God. Yeah. I remember when my Christian, well, my daughter had just become a Christian in Washington, was going to go introduce her fiancé to them in Colorado, and I thought, oh gosh, here's the true test, because, you know, they still have some of their yeah. rowdiness and their habits. So I thought, is she going to see the Christians that I see? So after she visited, she just came, stopped by, back at our house in Utah here, literally started to weep, and I go, what's the matter? And she goes, my brothers are so different. And I go, really, you could see past the, some of the still the bad habits that we were taught as LDS you shouldn't be doing, like the smoking or whatever. And she goes, Mom, my brothers care. They want to please God. They have never wanted that in their life. <laughs> so this is the cool thing about God. Some people are born again and changed in an instant. Yeah. Some are on this, per, this, this gentle journey yeah. of cleaning and scrubbing us up into the new creation. And it's just beautiful because everybody's story is so different and yet so similar. And you know, Christians, uh, and Mormons often think that Christians just get this born again thing or saved by grace, cheap grace or whatever, and that we can now go do anything we want. Whatever we want. And what, what would you say to that? I'd say, it's like I've tried to explain, because some of my kids have told me that that are still in the church. They just say, you, you, you're a Christian because it's easier. And I go, you got to try it. Yeah. It's really not easier. It's a lot harder. It's easier to, yeah, to go somewhere and be told what to do. Yeah. We'd like to call you to this church calling, la, 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 la. It's harder to keep this going yeah. and to listen and to trust God that he's going to guide your footsteps. That his yoke um, is easy and his burden is light. And it, uh, yes, we so get to rest in the work he did. My friend who's here today watching, she says, isn't it nice to know that you're good enough? And I says, no, it's amazing to know that I'm not good enough, just like I always thought, and that he is. And, and he can I can count on it. that. Yeah. I can look to him. I can stop working and look to him. And that's what the law does. And that's where the Israel... Jews and the Israel house of Israel was so under bondage yeah. and this grace that uh, Paul describes yeah. and that we have this freedom in, yeah. in Christ. People say, well, you have to work, you have to work. And I say, we work because of salvation, not yeah. for salvation. Because we love him, he loves us, and what he did for us. Yeah. We have a change of heart. We're born again. Yeah become new creatures. Yeah. Well, Patty, thank you so much for sharing. Can you believe our time's gone? Oh, and I can believe yeah. it. <laughs> time well, flies when you're having fun. You're so sweet and you, you thank certainly you. should be a great example to so many. Thanks. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week. Good night.